All right, this video will take us through prepping a SketchUp model in Revit to go to Insight 360. And then we'll break it and do a second video of um, how to navigate in Insight 360 uh, and, and, and check all of the energy uh, settings for the, for the building. All right, so to get a model into Revit, first strip it down to just the geometry that we need. Um, in this case, it's just this one house. Um, and then what we're going to do is, I believe you can save it as a SketchUp file, or as a, uh, or you can export it as a DWG. I'm going to actually export it as a DWG. So export 3D model, DWG, desktop. It's going to save over the other one. Sure. And then what we're going to do is um, go into Revit. And I'm actually have found that in order to make all this stuff work, when you click on it, you go, you want to bring it in as a family. So I'm going to make a new family, conceptual mass, mass. And um, what we do now is we insert the CAD. So import CAD, it's going to be the latest and greatest one here. Of course, it's going to come in like a mile away. So double click on your scroll wheel and find it. And then you have to unpin it. And I'm going to jump on the top and try and move it a little bit back to, well, we are going to move it back to the center. Now you can bring it in like this um, at an angle to match true north, or we'll rotate true north in the model. So we'll do the latter. I'm actually going to line this up with my align tool. I bet it's floating in space. Oh, here's Davis emailing me, even though I'm going to be sending them in this video. Go on down. It's going to do something weird when I try and align it to the bottom. Oh, nope, just sat down. Great. All right, so here's the building. It's all black, but we have the, the model in here. So now I'm going to save this family. And we will then open or actually we'll just start a new file. We'll start with the uh, typical BCJ template. So new, of course I don't have that set up on this computer. So we'll do project template, libraries, Revit, template, project templates, 2019. All right, so in here, um, uh, we're going to place that family. So let's first um, load it, insert, load family. I slapped it on my desktop, open. So it's going to show up under masses because it's a conceptual mass. And you drag it in. It enables mass view because that's not normally enabled by default. All right. So I'm going to just kind of align it with the middle of my model. So a few things to set up just right off the bat. For one, I'm going to gloss over the most time consuming thing, which is tracing all the walls and making rooms. But let's get a few other things right first before we do anything else. We go to manage location and it's not it's not in uh Boston or wherever this is putting us Boston yeah Boston it is just about here it's 
search. This should look familiar. I think it's more like that, but that's not going to change any of our weather stations. Hit OK. All right, so location is right. Now, positioning is not right. We need to get our true north right. Most of these houses are about six degrees off of true north. So the way you do that is when you're in a plan view, your orientation is typically project north. Set it to true north. Nothing changes because we haven't changed it yet. But we're going to go to the Manage tab, Position, Rotate to True North. And um, I know it's 6 degrees, so I'm just going to make it go 6 degrees. And that's it. Now the building is rotated properly for the sun. We can flip it back to Project North, so you draw on it normally. And, um, yeah, so now the, the real hard part is tracing your whole building. Um, basically, as a starting point, you can make the nice thing about bringing in um, CAD work as a uh, conceptual mass is you can make walls based off of um, face off of it. So it's very time consuming. They don't always work great and they might not be so precise. So I just I'm going to slop this together off screen um, so that we can talk about it more. But the basics is, if you started wanting to do things by face, I would say wall by face. Um, you probably do generic 12 inch. Click on that. You can't really see it, but if I um, if I override everything to actually have a color that's different than my mass, yeah, there's a wall. It, it takes the geometry from it. Um, same thing with the roofs. We would do uh, roof by face. It's a little different. You select the face and then you say create roof. And we would then do the same thing. Select the face, create roof, select the face, create roof. So that's how we would make walls and roofs. Um, curtain wall or glass, we would do the same way as a wall. Wall by face. And I got lost there for a second. Pick out a glass type, select it, and that just placed them. You can't see it in hidden line, but see that placed the glass right there. So we march around, we click on everything. Floors are a little different. Floors you have to draw the old-fashioned way by actually drawing, tracing around it. So just to give you an example, floor. Floor by face doesn't really work unless you make a solid mass and it's not imported as a family. Um, so floor by face, we would kind of run around like that. Um, before you do all of that, also make sure that your levels are in the right spot. I might have, see, I already drew some walls, so I don't want to move a level on me. Come on now, get in there. Yeah, so what we probably would want to do is um, draw a proper level, level two, and then a proper whatever this level is. Get rid of this. But, um, yeah, so we would want to do all of that before we start drawing the walls. So I got a little ahead of myself showing you how to draw the walls. But um, now I'm going to wave my mouse a little bit, and magically I will be done modeling this. Oh, oh it all disappeared. Hmm. Here it is. So this is um, all modeled in actual Revit pieces. And just, just to go through some of the things, um, the the windows are all glass, so we want to know where our glass is. I didn't bother putting in the mullions that you had, just because, again, we're just looking for where the glass is and where it isn't. Um, let me just try and make sure all this is consistently the same. Yeah. So we have our we have our clear stories in here, and um, yeah, so. The next thing is, is setting up your floor plans to take rooms. And that is really time consuming because sometimes these walls don't work well as enclosing spaces, especially when you put it together this rough. That's why it's nice to have a good Revit model to, to start off with. Um, so I'll just take you briefly through uh, how to do the rooms. So run into a floor plan. Um, 
what, what I normally like to do right off the bat is um, make sure your room's interior fill is, vi is visible. They're off by default, but you type VG, you go to rooms, and it's right here. So I already have it clicked because I might have already practiced this once. Um, so turn that on, and um, then click on room. And I normally turn off tag on placement because we don't need to see tags or even name these things. We just want to make sure we fill our interior space. So I'm going to go click, 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 click. And then I'll jump up to the second floor. It's never this easy at all. These rooms sometimes will cause big hassles. So this looks really easy. It's not. Um, I've already upset myself doing this today, getting all these walls to work. Sometimes you just have to remodel a wall. Um, what I normally do to try and find problems when you're running into problems is make a room separator line and cut off sections of the building like this. And if the rooms fill up this space, it means everything's okay over here and something's not okay over here. And I'll start moving it and moving it until you can narrow down exactly what window or wall is causing you a problem for placing your room. And it will do it. It's a pain. But we want to make sure that they're filling those all in. What we also want to do is make sure we're filling everything in vertically. And there's a couple things you have to make sure. Uh, one, area and volume uh, computations is always set to this off the bat. Um, I'll show you the difference, but we want it set to this. Um, I'll show you what, what that does. So what I'll also do is create a little dummy section that basically does the exact same thing as my plans, where I turn on visibility graphics and get my interior fill going. And you can see these rooms aren't filling their volumes. This one isn't even fill, starting at the right level. So, um, that's actually okay as long as they all touch. So like if I do this and it touches, good for good for us. But um, what the problem is, it will just run through the roof because we're not calculating volume. So that's when we go to the architecture tab, and under the room air and area, we turn on areas and volumes. And like that, it cuts off where it's supposed to be. And we get all these rooms doing the same thing. And then you don't have to make any more sections. You just drag the one section with you. So just to hit all those other rooms. All right, so we've filled up all of our interior space. Um, one good check to do is always make a uh, room schedule. And what we're looking for here is unplaced rooms. So I normally do area and name. So make sure they all have an area and make sure they don't say unplaced. And that means you have a nice, neat, nice, neat model. So that's it for getting it from from um, SketchUp to Revit. Um, it will take roughly 20 times longer than what I just did. And um, this is the email that Insight sends you once the, your analysis is complete. So um, for the next video, I am going to take this model and bring it into Insight.